Last week, we took you down to Texas on a private lease owned by a good friend, where my daughter and I each had success taking white-tailed deer with our crossbows. This is crazy, I love Texas. Wow. Texas Hill Country Buck. Love him. Located an hour northwest of Del Rio, the biggest reason for our trip down to the opposite end of the country was the free-ranging big game species, which are non-native to Texas. Well, I'm excited about this. It's a hunt that goes on year-round, and with a license, you're entitled to an unlimited amount of these non-native species, which were either introduced by DNR or happened to escape from game farms in the state. That one group of odd eds, you said there's like 20 or so in it. There's three shooters in there. Yeah, there's three billies. Odd ed, or Barbary sheep, is what first captivated me to make the trip to this place two years ago. Now, for those of you who didn't catch it, to set the stage, here's a few highlights from my first hunt for them down there two years ago. My first dog dad, he went, what, I don't know, 60, 70 yards? Handsome looking buggers. As I understand, very good to eat. If you want to experience some incredible hunting on absolutely free ranging wild animals, this part of Texas and, and a whole big chunk more around it has got all kinds of animals. Nice one, little Billy. Naturally, I was inspired by those hunts to bring my daughter Carly down to experience the same incredible hunting trip that I did. So, up next is her bid to take an odd dad with her crossbow. Enjoy, my friends. Were you ready for your first Texas adventure? First time in Texas? Yeah, first oh, time goodness. in Texas. Well, there's no tell what might walk in on you this morning. So you're in for a treat for sure. That's what's exciting about it. Mm -hmm. yeah, it could be all kinds of different critters. Good luck to you, baby. Thanks, you too. We're gonna try to bring a big one in. Marty told us that we were going to go up to the zoo, and so I, I mean, I was kind of excited because the zoo sounds something new, something exciting, and he said that that's where they see stuff, like every single animal he has on the ranch here is seen at the zoo, and it's almost 100% success rate. So when I heard that that's where we were lucky enough to go, I was pretty pumped. We have 10,000 acres out here in West Texas that is uh, free range country, just big country, thousands and thousands of acres, any, any direction you look, no houses. I mean, it's just a big, desolate country out here. So when we got up there, there was a big windmill and a bunch of water and stuff, and then just sort of like an open desert meadow area, and then our little plastic blind that we got to sit in, which was nice because it was clean and you could see everything you needed to see. And boy, did we ever see what we needed to see. A whole thing of odd dad ended up coming in. Our biggest species we have of exotics out here is uh, all dad. That's our favorite thing to chase out here. They got some big world-class type all dad running around these mountains. And uh, that's what kind of draws all the folks here. How far is he, do you think, like 50 now? He's right at 45. I mean, they came in too quick and I never got a shot at them. 
but it was my first time ever seeing them. I was kind of in shock, like, oh, what's this on there and what's that? Like, why do they look that way? And by the time I was done, like, examining them, they were gone. We just had some odd dad come in and they came in really quickly and I have no idea how to judge one. I mean, I know, kind of, like, they're supposed to have a big mane, big horns, but it was just so fast I had no idea what to do. And the next time I blinked, they were gone, so I guess better not next time. The odd dads came out and they came out and they came and like they were going really quick though and then one stopped and we're like is that the one that we want like I don't know and then the other ones came and then they all took off running and we missed the chance there. There you go. Well almost. Yeah. Almost. Okay let's continue down in Texas as Carly continues to pit her patience and skill against the challenging proposition of taking a giant Audad with her crossbow. We just had some Audad come in and they came in really quickly and the next time I blinked they were gone, so I guess better not luck next time. So we're back out here at the zoo again, hoping that the Audad come back. But I guess we're gonna see what we get out there. The next morning we got another chance at him and that's when we ended up seeing a huge one and my jaw literally dropped open. I saw him and I was like, oh my God, like this is a monster, this is crazy. And then he left, like he was only there for a little bit and then he was gone. But when he did come back, he brought his entire family. And it's like when you see a train coming and you're watching it and there's just more and more and more and it just keeps going. And that's how they were. I mean, it was just one after another. And Grandpa stepped out. So I ranged him and he was only 31 yards. So I was like, okay, I know I can do this. So I moved from the little window that I was at originally to the side window and I was able to bend just the right amount. Usually when I go out in the morning, I expect to see, you know, a couple animals here, a couple there. That was so intense. I definitely, I did not wake up thinking any of this was gonna happen. It's never really real to me that something huge is about to step in or that 60 or 70 big ones are gonna come in. I'm not used to that kind of stuff. This isn't even real life, this is not. But the excitement of seeing like this monstrous Audad come in and then leave and then bring back like 60 other ones was unreal. This is crazy, I love Texas. <laughs> wow. There was so many things going on and I looked down at my clock and it was only like nine o'clock. I mean, it, it just happened so fast. I didn't expect any of it, but it was such a good surprise. Well, we're gonna go get my Audad and we saw where he went down, so I don't think it's going to be too hard to find him, but I also kind of want to get my arrow first, but here we go. When I got up to the odd dad, I knew he'd be old, he'd be interesting, but I had no idea that he was going to be like going bald and have scars and sores. Like he was so much more interesting than any other animal I think I've ever shot. He turned out to be such a cool looking guy. He doesn't have like the rest of his horn on this side. He's got a bunch of scars up here. He's like he's all worn out and like just old. His body tells a story of how long he's been alive and what he's been through and it's really cool to look at that. I think I'd rather choose something like that over some big trophy. 
this is just incredible. I mean, he's super old. He looks so much different than the rest of the odd dad we saw this morning. And after last night, I was pretty upset that we didn't get a chance to shoot one because of my first time seeing him. But he was definitely worth the wait. He is so old and all worn out and all scratchy. Like, he's so interesting. I mean, I don't even know what he's been through, but I bet it's a lot. And, I mean, I made a perfect shot of him. He didn't go but 50 yards, maybe. And it just turned out to be such a good morning hunt. I'm so thankful that we came back to the stand. I can't wait to show my dad. Carly shot a giant, great all dad, just uh, probably the oldest one of the bunch, which we're all wanting to do anyway. Just a trophy by all respects. I think one of the most important things about harvesting an animal is the ability to use its meat and use what you can from it. So the night that we took the back straps out of my odd dad, I was really proud because I was able to feed everybody in camp with something that I did that exact day. Yeah, I came in uh, from hunting myself uh, yesterday evening and Carly had the back straps out of the all dad that she had killed and we grilled them up. She butterflied them on the grill and there was a bunch of happy hunters when we all got back to camp with all the back straps she had laid out for everybody. So it, it was a really good meal. All right, moving along. To say our trip to Texas last fall was primarily for the benefit of Carly this time around <laughs> is an understatement. And I was all about her taking the best blinds to maximize her opportunity. Anyway, let's go now to another of her hunts, which culminated in a massive wild boar stepping out to test her nerve. I've never seen a hog before. What's, what's gonna happen? You're gonna hear them coming long before you see them. <laughs> Are there just like gigantic ones and a bunch of little ones? Or like, how Most does of the that time work? you're gonna have some sows that are not very big. Can you like to see them. that it's a sow? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Marty's got such an impressive free range ranch down here. I mean, I never expected to see the kind of things and it, I thought we were just going for odd dad and whitetail, but when I got down here, he's like, oh, we got this and this and this and 12 other things, so good luck. And he's so friendly and so helpful and everything here is just wonderful. I mean, he makes sure you're taken care of and then to come out and see these incredible animals just makes its experience so much better. I am ready for the next thing to come in. So last night we went back to the spider stand and as soon as we sat down, a buck came in and he was a good buck and he fed around, fed around, like just kind of played around and then he left and another little buck came in and he ate a little bit and walked around and then he kind of got like finicky, nervous and he ended up leaving and just a short while after we heard some pig grunts and I looked up and probably like six or seven pigs came darting in front of our blind and then stopped and then went and then stopped and it was cool because they weren't black like some of them were black but then there was brown and there was pink and there was spotted and there was white. The hogs are uh, like everywhere else in Texas I guess they're taking over and uh, they're just everywhere. If the deer aren't moving and all that aren't moving and the axis aren't moving you can always go shoot a hog. I knew pigs were pretty fat, but I didn't expect them to be as big as mine was. After quite a hike through some rigorous terrain, we made it to my pig. <laughs> totally walked right past it because he's black, and I was I walked past him and I'm like, oh, I can smell him, he's gotta be close, <laughs> right next to me. But what a nice pig. When we got up to my pig and we had him pulled out and everything, and I gotta look him over, and he's black and gnarly, and he looks so mean. He looks like he just ripped your leg off. We're having back straps tonight. Carly shot a really big boar hog out here. That, uh, I told her to be a trophy hog anywhere. Holy buckets, Carly. He's got four inch cutters, just a really big hog. First off, I'm really glad I said you take that stat. For her first hog, 
definitely a, a trophy hog for the wall, and she did a great job. This is a big old hog. He's worth it, because uh, we're having back straps tonight. I'm really excited for that. I've never had wild pig back straps, especially that I just shot. That's like, the first pig you've ever seen in your life. You made a and he's huge shot on and like, first time I mean, in that's Texas. a mounting pig. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. First pig you kept your cool, you impressed me. That's why you bring your daughter along or your son along. I mean, when Marty told us about this one uh, uh, line, he went and checked cards and uh, he's got cameras on them and he said there had been a bunch of hogs there and I said, Carly, you take that spot. She'd never seen one before. Boy, am I glad I did. Overall, Texas turned out to be something so much more than I expected. With the different types of deer, the different types of goats, the different types of just creatures, it was overall a wonderful experience and I would definitely love to come back sometime. You know, I think most hunters truly understand that the harvesting of wild game is indeed a management tool that helps to keep populations in check. And though it may be a secondary reason why the majority of us do hunt, Today's adventures are a prime example of why it's so important. Of course, the deer Carly and I were able to take required the purchase of a deer tag. I mean, as native game, the Texas DNR monitors their numbers extremely closely. Nice buck, three and a half year old buck. Texas deer are so much smaller than what I'm used to, but he's a beauty and he's mine. On the other hand, why would wildlife managers allow hunters to take non-native species like we did on a year-round basis and in unlimited numbers under only one general hunting license? That's right, because hunting is the most economically smart way to eliminate enough of those non-native species to ensure that native species thrive. And because of that, Carly and I and other hunters in the region have an unbelievable opportunity to hunt for free-ranging, completely wild big game species. Sometimes I get so sick and tired of the anti's portrayal of hunters, they absolutely refuse to accept the fact that hunting is the best way to manage wild game populations. Well, today's hunt for non-native species is a perfect example of one way to ensure that native Texas species won't suffer from the onslaught of outside invaders. I'm Babe Winkleman. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, everybody, hey, good hunting.